self-described African-American activist, lesbian poet, Audre Lorde said, I am not free while any woman is unfree, even when her shackles are very different from my own. I have come to believe over and over again that the things that are most important to me must be spoken, must be shared, made verbal, even at the risk of them becoming bruised or misunderstood. We've been taught to respect fear more than ourselves. We've been told our silence would save us, but it won't. Your silence will not protect you. We will speak our truth. Can you hear us? Feminism is absolutely a conflict. A conflict not against men, but against a patriarchal society. That patriarchy seeks to silence not just female voices, but any voice that doesn't conform to the traditional definition of masculinity. Throughout our lives, men have heard, that's gay. Real men? Don't cry. Man up, don't be a sissy. I will never be able to see you as a man. So we embrace feminism, not to prioritize the female perspective, but to honor all perspectives and encourage us and each other 
to become more fully formed humans. Each word a stone we can build a wall. We can build a wall. We can build a wall or a path to each other, to each other, a path to each other, each other, a path to each other. Each word. A stone we can build a wall. A stone. We can we can Gender equality is not about honoring two sexes. It is about honoring the infinite expressions that men, women, queer, trans, and non-binary folks have. And it is about not letting those infinite expressions limit their opportunities or their resources.
she wears the crown. land of indigenous people, of the Seneca tribal nations, their ancestors, past, present, and future. Voices 21C asks you to consider the painful genocide, the forced removal of indigenous people from these lands and from settler territories everywhere, and to consider the continuing relationship that indigenous people have with this land and everywhere. Would you harbor me? Would I harbor you? Would you harbor This land where the horrors of inhumanity tear us apart. Why do we want to kill all the broken people on this planet? What is it about it that when we see brokenness, we get angry? We want to hurt it. We want to crush it. We take hands. I take your hands, even with their walls, even with separation. The love continues.
social activist Elvira Arellano was taken from her son and deported in 2007, she took Saulito's hands and said to him very calmly, they can't hurt us. God is protecting us. You just have to have faith and I will be fine and with you soon. She took his hands. 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 She said to him.
Equal Justice Initiative writes, on June 21st, 1940, a 26-year-old black man named Jesse Clarkson addressed a passing police officer by his name, Doris Close. The officer, a white man, overheard Mr. Thornton and ordered him to clarify his statement. Mr. Thornton attempted to correct himself by referring to the officer as Mr. Doris Rose. The officer heard a racial slur while knocking him to the ground and arresting him. Mr. Rose then walked him into a city jail as a mob of white men formed just outside. Mr. Thornton tried to escape and managed to flee a short distance as the mob quickly pursued firing gunshots, throwing bats, bricks, and stones at him. Mr. Thornton was injured by gunfire and eventually collapsed. The mob then dumped him into a truck, drove to an isolated street where he was dragged into a nearby swamp and shot again. Mr. Thornton, decomposing, Vulture Ravage's body was found a week later by a local fisherman in the Pasadena River. Not far from where the body was found, William Dawson was teaching and conducting at the Tuskegee Institute, where he was writing Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air.
The child that we cast away, flushed down the school to prison pipeline for decades in the cage to lay. My soul strolls the Confederate's river where I must call master, mister. Strange fruit bought pick from the lynching tree. What ghosts would dare compose a song for me? I am nothing but a menace to society with no big will for God's grace to carry me to a place where my foot won't slip beneath the sand to drown as a man child in the promised land. So my soul will decompose in a cell for 22 years, made in the veneer of America's fears. Who will fight for the child that the village failed to raise with no audacity to hope for better days? No man can put a chain about the ankle of his fellow man without at last finding it fastened about his own neck. With no audacity to hope for better days. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Until the killing of black men, black mother's sons, is as important as the 
with the exception of the natives, none of us are hosts. And we compelled the Chicanos to sell us the West Coast. If all men were created equal, then what about the women? African descendants, transgender, and the children? Or was the Declaration of Independence simply for white males while the remainder of us just drowned beneath the natives, tears, trails? The land of the free, life, love, and liberty, where you can be all that you can be and hang a nigger from a tree. The home of the brave chattel property slaves where even the underage get sentenced to life in a cage. Thirteenth Amendment only changed the masses' whips to mass incarceration. Prison buses are the new slave ships. Nineteenth Amendment, still women have to lean in. Me Too movement, gender pay still uneven. Therefore, if I shall stand or choose to take a knee, am I a son of a bitch for the right that the First Amendment gave to me? A moment of silence with my right hand over my heart? Yet when I put my hands up, cops still shoot me dead in my heart? Give us your hungry and your poor to send your sons and daughters off to war. Give us your hungry and your poor to send your sons and daughters off to war. While the corporation lobbyists dictate the laws on Congress floor, the rich get bailed out for the poor to get an eviction. And Mr. Jim Crow will show no mercy for your criminal conviction. So poverty just rolls over and student loans are never forgiven. While we drown beneath underwater mortgages in the pursuit of happiness of our vision, show me a constitutional provision that would erase the hate and division. The then we can all stand for a national anthem that represents all the women, men, and children.
To be on the right side of the revolution is to shift our view of peace so that we can alter our evolution. War is not the way. Can we be tranquil and somewhat tame? Rational while we stay sane? Solve the problem with the solution thereof, that being unconditional love.
not going to write poems about people judging people. I'm going to write poems and speak about people loving people. The problem is much bigger than just class and race. It's not a political war, but a spiritual battle between love and hate. If it's going to take a village, then our villages are going to need love. So when they see us, they don't see us as killers and thugs. So when they see us, they see us and don't judge. So when they see us, they see us with eyes full of love.